So just how difficult is it to host, manage and merge the world of dance music with an orchestra? I've been chatting to a man who knows. How are you? Phil Marriott here with the latest entertainment news reviews and interviews. On this channel, I aim to bring you at least a couple of videos a week where you'll see me out and about chatting to the entertainment industry's key figures. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and don't forget to check out the show notes and the links in the description box below. My video today is with the man who has been with BBC Radio 1 for over 25 years, broadcasting massively successful shows such as Essential Selection. Pete Tong, good to see you. Hiya. Thanks How for having us. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You've got your classic house album coming out this week. Yes, it's, it's slipping out as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> the album, it's with the Heritage Orchestra. Yep. Fantastic concept because I think it is the sort of thing that would make people that might have been cynical about dance yeah. music made their minds open a little bit. Yeah, I think it was all, I mean, nobody knew, you know, it was very exciting to get the opportunity to do the prom last year. None of us knew quite what the reaction would be but the reaction was such that um we, we seem to get so much momentum after that show there's so many people asking you know would we do it again why weren't they there why, why didn't they know about it can we hear it can we buy it so when we eventually got got it together to um do these arena shows this year we thought it would be you know a fitting memento to you know to if we if we could make it work and get the right opportunity to make it work um let's let's go and record it and record it properly so you know, we signed it to Polydor to Universal, and they they gave us the budget really, and and enabled us to do it in the way we we really wanted to do it. So, and I got Mark, we got Mark Ralph in to produce it. It was an amazing guy. So, yeah, the co the combination of talent in the in the rooms for for the uh, recording was just insane. How did you select the tracks? Because it must have been quite a job to actually go yeah, through I mean, and it, just it, pick out yeah twenty. Yeah, you know, ask a DJ's favorite tunes, and then head normally it goes into meltdown. Um, <laughs> but weirdly. The original concept was actually <laughs> a bit stars on 45. We were going to try and do 70 tunes in 70 minutes. And um, Jules and Chris pointed out that that would take about 10 years to, um, to, <laughs> to score. So we ended up with about 35 that were real contenders. Um, and then we worked through them song by song. And I, I'd kind of arranged them in an order and I like, started to visualise the ebb and flow in the room and like what people would be watching and how they'd experience it. I wanted to... You know, very much like a DJ set. I wanted there to be highs, but I wanted there to be quiet moments. I wanted there to be moments when we could transition on stage and bring singers on and off, and like have people to look at in a different way. And just very much planned it like a you know, in a visual way. And um, so that starts to edit things and make decisions for you as well. And then obviously, yeah, that that the ultimate is like this tune will orchestrate brilliantly. That tune, not less so. So that yeah. you know. But I was just on the phone to him just earlier. We're talking about the, some of the new tracks um, that we're adding to these arena shows. We're, we're doing, because um, Jesse Ware's joining us, so we're going to do um, one of her tracks. And Disclosure were involved in that. And the way they write music and chop up music in, in, in the sampler is really tricky to play for an orchestra. So we're just debating today how to do that. So Have you had much feedback from the original producers and the DJs? And yeah, the every, everybody's well? been like... Um, yeah, I mean, on the night, I, I you know, um, Paul Hartnell from from Orbital was on the dance floor, um, just absolutely loving it. You know, Norman Cook, you know, absolutely wasn't there in the, in the prom, but absolutely loved it. I mean, every everyone involved, you know, over time, you know, Jamie Principal, I eventually bumped into, and he, I got him. He was the original singer of Your Love, like absolutely freaked out, loved it, and you know, wanted to be part of the record. So we were so honoured to have him back singing Your Love. Um, so yeah, loads of you know, loads of people, and and then the young, from the younger element, Ella Rare and John Newman, I remember you know just saying to me that was one one of the most craziest things I've ever been involved in. You know, they want to be involved again because they I don't think either of them really knew what was going to happen until yeah. they actually stepped on stage at the Albert Hall. So that's great. Yeah. That's the feedback you yeah. want, isn't it? Yeah. If you're behind that, you're cu curating it. Absolutely, you know absolutely. It's um, to be it's embraced. been a joyous. <laughs> I have to say, it's been a joyous journey and it's yeah. been an amazing thing to come you know to come along it's just one of those great opportunities i wanted to make the most of it and here we are today still talking about it yeah, it's great <laughs> it's fantastic on the flip side of that i'm um, not wanting to dwell on negatives but were there any tracks that were difficult to rework in the orchestral sense we, there, there's a thing about i was, I was thinking about live music as well like live music sometimes 
It's different with a DJ because a DJ, you're often you're playing other people's music in in its original form. And you're you're obviously manipulating it, and people have different views about you know recording sets and was it good as being there listening to it the memento and then you know you take that up a level and then actually start re-performing these this these great tunes and you know that are you doing them justice you know are you are you adding to them and i and i think there's a there's a magic when you're in the room and you're experiencing it live and and there's there's a kind of x factor of that that you can't really capture um so we had a lot of debate about that. You know, would just recording the orchestra demystify it a little bit? You know, because effectively we're not producing, we're not playing our own music. We didn't write these songs. We're paying, playing homage to these classics. And somehow would we, you know, would would it kind of, um, what's the kind of word I'm looking for? Some Somehow kind of, yeah, devalue and like cheapen it a little bit by kind of recording it. So we, th- we there was a lot of debate about that. And initially the orchestra, Chris was very anti- us recording it because he, he just thought it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't sound as good as it would in the room and then it was only once we got really into you know i said well i want to make it like we were making an original record and he and he was like he didn't even consider that as an option it was like he just thought we were going to set the whole orchestra up in a big theater and like put the mics up and just do the whole set and record it i said no 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 we're going to go and make it as if we're making this music from you know as originals which mean which means you build the tracks from you know the drum and the bass and the programming the the core band and we we add the orchestra at the end, and once we went down that road and got Mark Ralph involved, um, we all got really excited about the fact that we could do this in a a really enhanced way, and I'm I'm so happy with some of the feedback from people's opinions. I really respect um, just this week getting messages back going just saying can't, I can't believe how good it sounds. You know, we we plugged into an infrastructure at Albert Hall for the proms, which is incredible, and it's been there a hundred years. And the BBC yeah. know how to do that so well. Um, so w- all we really had to worry about is actually playing the tunes in the right order. We knew the orchestra could play. The audience was so amazing, and they, and they they really created the ultimately. They that was the X factor on the night. The, the way the crowd responded to what we were doing. You know, I'll always remember, you know, the first breakdown in right here, right now, you know, the orchestra start clapping and then the whole audience, literally everyone, 5,000 people start clapping. And everyone stood up if they weren't standing up already and they stayed standing up for the whole thing. And um, you don't see that in the Royal Albert Hall. And I was, I kept looking behind me because you've got that 360 kind of perspective and all these people and they're just so joyous. Yeah. <laughs> it became infectious. I mean, so happy. I mean... Obviously, I spent my whole life in clubs, and you're always trying to make people to do that, and occasionally you get it to happen. But um, it was, yeah, there was just immense amount of euphoria in the room, and yeah. that became infectious. You know? Including the conductor who was singing along to the songs. When you watch the, no, absolutely. You yeah, know, the yeah, video yeah, back, yeah, yeah. you watch it on the iPlay. You've got some shows coming up, including the O2 London. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I think just now, doing this round of um, you know, PR for the shows, it's I actually thought earlier today for the first time. I wouldn't say nervous was the right word, but it kind of the, it's dawning on me the responsibility <laughs> of what we've taken on that it actually better better be good. So, you know, it's it's really exciting. I've got an amazing team. It's like a juggernaut of a team, all all very talented. You know, this this time we're going into an empty space. That's what happens when you book. You know, the Albert Hall. As I said, it was a you're walking into an infrastructure that was there, and we literally walk in and plug in and play. Whereas at the O2, you you get the room and and um, you have to build everything. So we, again, it's a learning curve for me in a building a stage, a building a stage that can accommodate an orchestra, building the look and the visuals and everything like that. So um, that's what we've been doing for the last few months. So for the people that weren't lucky enough, fortunate enough to see you at the Albert Hall for the show there, is it going to be the oh, same kind of thing? Massively enhanced oh, okay. version. Um, Certainly, from a staging perspective, because as I say, we just walked onto the, the Albert Hall stage and we used what everyone else used every every day of the proms. Um, so I think, apart from the couple of lasers that were flashing around, um, no, this time it's a it's a proper show, um, a proper production, and it, you know the set list is dominated by the the prom show because that is why we're doing it. I think that's why it's sold out so quickly um, because there was a demand to see that show. So I we feel. A great responsibility that we want to deliver that again. I think um, hopefully now we've gone through the recording experience, it'll be 
you know, we were aiming to make it even better than the proms. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. And yeah, Candy Statton coming on to perform. You've got wow. the love. Oh, wow. Um, that's incredible. Which is, it was mad. So hopefully a few more surprises along the way. Yeah, now. that's great yeah. to hear. Uh, finally, uh, the catchphrase, it's all gone Pete Tong. What are your thoughts on that now? Looking yeah, I love back. it. I love it. You still I love it. should have got royalties on it, shouldn't I? <laughs> That was going to be um, the next question, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was in Shaftesbury Avenue yesterday and I saw Peter Pan goes wrong. And I thought, they never called me. <laughs> what's, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs>